computer went tough. Okay. Ah! Okay. That's the temperature of my porch. <laughs> temperature of the porch and temperature of the sky over the porch. Okay. Um, there's free software <coughs> available for this device <coughs> that operates it through the serial port. Uh, the, the USB port. So what we do is we plug it in. And turn it on. <coughs> it chimed. Now, this thing will op operate autonomously on batteries, outdoors. Um, but if you're trying to design something, you put, the, you put the computer on the bench and have your little bench set up. What's the software called, Jerry? Um, VNA Saver. Yeah, um, yeah, Nano VNA Saver. <coughs> Yeah. There, there are uh, different flavors of this and different sources for different types. But uh, this, one, this one is made for this device. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to uh, like zoom out and let's get one in here. Zoom it down. I have it set for it's white screen. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to scan since, okay, it says it's on COM4, it actually found it, <coughs> and we want to, on the lower left there, we want to connect to it, okay, it connected. Now, there's nothing connected to it, and I've already calibrated this. I won't bore you with how to calibrate it, because you, you have to calibrate uh, the device using uh, these little um, accessories. Um, it also memorizes profiles, so you can calibrate it to different... different cables, different extensions, you know, your BNCs or whatever. Uh, and it will remember those, it, it'll uh, store those profiles, so you don't have to calibrate it every time. Plus, the software um, aids in calibration. And uh, one thing that John didn't mention is this also does TDR, time domain reflectometry. So you can test your cables with this. It'll tell you how long they are, their velocities, <coughs> Uh, their impedances, if there are problems with it, it'll, it'll actually show you where there may be a blemish in the, um, the uh, shield or something like that. If anybody has trouble with their, with their feeds and they're not getting out uh, good power, uh, this thing will show you actually where the interruption is in your cable. If you have cables underground or you're pulling cables, and it can be Ethernet, it'll check an Ethernet cable too. You have to have an adapter, but it will do that. Um, so, uh, checking your cables, this thing, 50 bucks, checking your cables. You can't beat it. So what we see here is Smith chart. Nothing connected to it. A little curly cue here. Uh, the return loss, which is uh, the, the uh, this is the log magnitude. So this logarithmic scale here. Um, this is a phase chart showing um, inductance and capacitance and um, the SWR. So let's connect something to it, just for giggles. This is a ballon I made. Okay, high power ballon.
And like I said, if you're if you're going to be designing something like this, you need to set up a bench, you know, a test bench, so that you can just walk up to it and test your stuff without having to reproduce your work over and over again so that it's set up in a static manner. Okay, let's scan. Okay, it's set up from, it's going from 50 kilohertz to 900 megahertz, which is ridiculous. But let's sweep it anyway. Hmm. There we go. It's garbage. So let me set it up for <coughs> frequencies that we want. <coughs> One megahertz to thirty one megahertz. It's, it's rejecting right here. It's rejecting this and it's accepting that. And this isn't a perfect, nothing here is perfect, and th this may be out of calibration, but this is for your demonstration purposes. You can see here, um, everybody understands the, the um, SWR, right? Those numbers here on the left, that's the SWR right here. Okay? And this is the frequency. So 16 megahertz in the middle. 100 kilohertz on the left. So uh, if we take a marker, let's, let's choose a marker for 7.5. Okay. That's... Uh, that's, that's the performance at 7.5 megahertz, with nothing connected to the valon. It's just it's just open. I think I can get it to sweep. Let's get it to sweep continuously. Single. Continuous. Okay. Shit. The, uh, the computer, see it's sweeping here, but it's not sweeping on the... This is the pertinent data for the marker right here. It's at 7.6 megs, uh, 56 ohms. That's not bad. But it's not uh, updating the display for some reason. Or is it? So what we do, this is a, this is a, a ballon that you can use in your bedroom. So what you do is you, uh, somebody give me a chair. So uh, I want to, to transmit in an emergency situation and I need an antenna. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I've seen those used before. Slinky. <laughs> What's the polarization? <laughs> Seriously, that's right the, vehicle. What's the polarization? Horizontal. Horizontal. Radial. Vertical. Vertical. Okay. It's not. It's not. It's not helical. Or Whatever you say. It's not <laughs> polar. It's vertical. Oh. I'm not worthy. I'm. I'm. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to get the. Uh, That's called slinky the Computer. To scan and it just doesn't. Display set up in the bottom left corner. That's not circular. There, there we go. There. We go. there. Is it up? Yes, it's updating now. Okay. So the SWR is the uh, the magic curve, the one in the lower right. And you notice that that uh, that when I hooked up the antenna. It it really changed. So if I take the antenna off, <coughs> see it becomes more resistive. Put the antenna back on. And the lower right box is what your MFJ 259 is reading. Yes. But this is reading it over a span of frequency. <clears throat> graphing it. So if we go. So it's a graphing PL259. <coughs> See, SWR is really low there. So uh, I could I could like, you know, move this around and it should change things. I can uh, I could put strings on here, move it around until I get really good SWR and leave it there, then I could transfer this connection to my transceiver. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> well, you're all set, ready to go. And, and, you know, we don't need a computer to do this. We can do it just with this thing. And use the computer here to show everyone so everyone can see it. Yes, sir? You want to say something? No? Oh. No. Was, no. Okay. I was just thinking it. I thought, I thought it's, that. If it's awesome, I don't have the time to uh, push the talk. <laughs> so oh, no. It's at the right frequency. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you. Yeah, it's See the return loss up there in the upper right? So, uh,. That's C, 4.72 megahertz, 4.6 megahertz for the marker, uh, 36 <coughs> hertz. So, uh, ask me questions, please. I, I can't tell by the, looking at the graph there. What uh, frequency is it resonant on right now? The marker here is... It's shown here. Can you see these stats here? No, it's, yeah, it's the scale that. along the bottom. I was just curious about what it. See the it's scale. 16 megahertz. Oh, so it, the the red marker <coughs> that is established here is 4.6 megahertz, and it's showing 52 ohms. Oh. And you can move the marker so you can yeah. know what it is at other points. The SWR is 1.0. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Leave <clears throat> that antenna up. It's a 60 meter. <laughs> Is that so, a 9 to 1 ball? 4 .6. Yes, 9 to 1. Okay. Yes. That's why it's got to Yeah. Okay. And you can, you can see how your body affects yeah. things. So the great thing about the, the slinky is that you can string it across in your bedroom over in the corner so it's not near anything that's moving around. So you can get relatively static. Now, uh, if you have an antenna tuner, you can put it in between here, and uh, it'll show you exactly what you're doing. And then you can disconnect it and hook your transceiver to it. And if you put the antenna tuner in that that top one, top left one, but you can bring it right to the middle of the chart. That's where it's perfectly tuned up, as yeah. that one is right there. See, A straight line is is 
and through the middle is resistance. Oh, that frequency is perfectly tuned. <laughs> yes, it's very good right there. But uh, the the uh, the core in there is designed for the uh, the HF band. So if I went in there and I moved the wires around a little bit and tweaked on it a little bit, uh, we could change the way it performs. And of course, this is not the ideal static antenna. But um, you know, this Maybe is this static. is the spy antenna. Yeah. <laughs> yes, officer, it's just a slinky. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. I have a question. Yes, sir. Ask away. Where's the PVC? <laughs> Where's the PVC? Did you yeah. do it? <laughs> okay. There's always one. There's always one in the crowd, right? Be nice to have a follow up. Be nice to have a follow-up session that maybe where we measure the club antennas. Oh yeah, um, last year I brought my my uh, scalar analyzer. A scalar is is um, just the top half. It just does reflection, whereas the vector network analyzer does through our, our scalar. So it'll do just scalar reflections. Or we'll do through, so you can have a filter. You can design a filter or a choke, or a ballon in this case. So I could I could actually hook the output of the analyzer to the input of the ballon, and the output of the ballon to the input of the analyzer, and I could I could adjust the wires and size so that it does exactly what I want. Uh, you can get uh, very good results with this little device. Yes, sir. How accurate is the frequency that it puts out? Do you have to. It's calibrate? very good. Okay. It's very good. Um, on the uh, on the on the YouTube, uh, there are people who are comparing this to a two hundred fifty thousand dollar analyzer, and it, it's it's very close, just <coughs> less than a percent off, and you just can't beat that. Yes, sir. So, in in preparation for attending this talk today, uh, I used uh, one of our very useful tools, Wikipedia. Uh, there's a really good eight-page article on network analyzer. Uh, I recommend it highly because it helps you to understand, for example, what the hell S parameters are. Yeah. Um, and, and also provides a block diagram of how, how a vector network analyzer you know, yes. what's in it. So I, I recommend it very highly. It takes some it takes some study to know what this stuff means, but for the first time in the history of ham radio, you've got a device for a price you can afford that makes it worthwhile studying this stuff until you know what all this means. I understand all this stuff and I use it very actively. Yeah. But I had to I had to do a lot yeah. of research to come to understand it. But I can do this with a fifty dollar network analyzer or the one I had before cost four hundred. But that's still within ham range. Yeah, and uh, there's no limit to the price of these things. So the Smith chart, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the center line is resistance. Yes, right. right. Okay. From <coughs> zero to infinity. <coughs> anything above is capacitance and anything below is inductance. So as the frequency, this is the, the sweep frequency. We're sweeping uh, 1 megahertz to 31 megahertz. So this, this dot, th there are 100 dots, 100, 100 points. It's measuring 100 points. And boy, it's really flipping around, isn't it? So, so uh, what you see here is the impedance. Uh, here, here we have a, a linear chart. Uh, showing the capacitance and inductance separately. So if you if you combine this onto the circular chart, it would be a single line. This is the uh, capacitance and inductance separately, and this is the capacitance and inductance on a single chart, on a single line. That's all it is. So any you notice that our SWR is very low, very low. It's showing 1.06. And the, uh, the marker is the same on all of them. See how they're convergent here? It's very low here and it's very low here. 
but it's also on the resistance line. And it's right in the middle, which is 50 ohms. So when you have a when you have the line crossing here, the frequency at which it's crossing in the center of the Smith chart is 50 ohms. No capacitance, no inductance, which gives you the lowest SWR. It's just that simple. So the, the great thing about this is you can, you can lay elements out on the table. If you're trying to make a, a log periodic or something, you can lay them out on a table. You can hook this up to it. You can watch this stuff. And you can move the elements around and snip on them and solder and move stuff around. And, you know, put PVC. Put them in PVC. <laughs> Copper pipe. Copper pipe. Yeah. And... Uh, you'll be able to see exactly what they're doing dynamically instead of having to, to um, fiddle with a static one-dimensional meter. You can do good work with meters, you know. A century went by before we had something like this. And it's only going to get better. Next month I'll show you my copper helix, which, which Jim and I kind of brainstormed together. Which was all tuned up on a vector analyzer. You can spend a quarter of a million dollars on a VNA, and uh, you know they go up to like seventy gigahertz. And you can't haul it up the antenna. And, and <laughs> right, right. And it's a big box like that, and you have to pay uh, eight thousand dollars a year for service fee. Uh, so, but what what those analyzers have are four of these inside. Four directional couplers, so you can you can do ref, uh, reflection on both ends of a filter. So it shows you the transmission loss on both the, both the input and the output. And some VNAs you can actually hook directly to the live circuit. You can hook the VNA to the transmitter while it's operating. <sighs> okay, I'm I'm done. <laughs> 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 Mostly use the S11 SWR. <laughs> I just had a comment from my. Where did mine go about all of this?